it had to be a lightsaber that was as awesome as the character, and boy did it turn out like that. Hello everyone, welcome back or welcome to my channel if this is your first time here. Whilst we're taking a quick trip through hyperspace, I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you to all the new subscribers since my last video. It's been great seeing how many people are interested in seeing what I'm producing and I'm looking forward to this one and hopefully you guys are going to enjoy it as well. So in today's video, in keeping with the theme of Valentine's Day coming up, I wanted to go over the other big love story in Star Wars. Everyone knows about Han and Leia, but no one really ever talks about Luke and Mara. So today we're going to build not one, but two lightsabers, Luke Skywalkers and Mara Jades. So without any further ado, let's hit those time lapses and get on with it. For Luke's lightsaber, I wanted to go with what would be the ultimate version that I could find of his episode 6 lightsaber, the one from Return of the Jedi, the green saber. And looking around, I found what was an absolutely amazing model on printables by Unimatrix Red. And this saber was absolutely fantastic. Screen accurate scale absolutely beautiful looking design and he even went as far as to include the slide open control box from a deleted scene from return of the jedi inside the saber that includes all of the internal electronics i opted not to include that in this build simply because of the fact that i'm looking for pieces that can sit on my wall and i can look at and say okay that's that's awesome that's exactly what i wanted that level of micro detail for what I wanted on my wall was probably a little bit too far. Is it something that I would do if I was doing a prop, for example, if I was doing a prop for a customer, if I was doing a commission for someone? Absolutely. I would give them the option of including the control panel if they wanted. I've got the capacity to do it, so why not? All in all, as you can see, the Luke piece is printed out really easily, really clean, no problems at all, and I was ready to get on and start printing the Mara ones. So when it came to Mara, this was a lot more difficult, because believe it or not, there are not that many STL packages out there for Mara Jade. And it took a while of looking through, and eventually I found a pretty decent one on Thingiverse by Master Jedi. And I liked the look of it, but there was a few things that I just um, figured I would clean up while I was doing it. So I put a little bit of work in on my side and just changed the way a couple of pieces were set up here and there for how I wanted to do it. And then started printing it out. And... As it was printing out, I was looking at it, and I was like, God, this, thing, this thing's this thing got a lot to it. And when I say it's got a lot to it, there's a point where you'll see it starts printing out screws. There were 30 of these screws that needed printing out, so it meant it was a lot of pieces printing out, and it was a lot of work to put it together. As you'll see, once we get into the assembly phase, this, this lightsaber was the ultimate in terms of the design, screen accuracy, and everything. Master Jedi did a great job on originally designing this saber. All I changed on it was a few bits here and there that I wanted to adjust to just make it that little bit extra, almost, from what I was doing. And I wanted it to do justice to the Mara Jade character because she's an amazing character in the extended universe and as of yet we do not have a live action version of Mara Jade. I've read a lot of things saying that Shin Hati from Ahsoka is maybe going to become a Mara Jade-esque character because she's supposed to be roughly the same age as Luke in this period. And she may have a Mara Jade-like role in the upcoming movie that Filoni's doing, the Heir to the Empire-esque movie. And don't get me wrong, her lightsaber's pretty cool as well. I've already printed hers. 
But this was about Luke and Mara, and Mara's saber had to be perfect, and oh boy did it deliver when I was done. If you go back through some of my previous videos when I'm doing lightsaber builds, you'll see that I like to set everything out nicely so that I have an idea of what I'm doing. Now with Luke's saber, this was especially important because the upper grip section of his saber is literally individual discs and it's it's silver and black alternating and there's i want to say maybe 18 of these discs that have to alternate back and forth till you get to the top of it which you'll see i'm putting together now one at a time and i'm literally being so careful as i'm gluing them because i don't want glue squeezing out over the sides and We've seen from the previous videos that my glue container is not exactly the most gentle of things at times. When you need a precision tool, that glue container is like a hammer. So it's like when, when you're looking for a very, very fine needle, what you've got is you've got a hammer. You know, so it's not the best, but at the same time... I do love that glue for a few reasons. For one, it bonds really quickly. It's E6000 brand, so once it's bonded, it's locked in and it's good to go. It's industrial adhesive. And it doesn't stain PLA. Now, that's the important thing because you'll see I have a pot of Loctite on my desk that I rarely ever pick up. Because, God forbid, if you make the slightest mistake with Loctite and you get glue somewhere, it's going to bleach the colour out of the PLA in seconds. So, it's really annoying that that's the case. But this E6000 doesn't actually do that. So, I can literally come in afterwards with a cloth with some alcohol on it and I can just wipe away the excess glue if there's any around which is absolutely fantastic you know that's for me for me that was a game changer because I didn't think that I could use something that could bond quickly and not stain the product at the same time because E6000 the standard version is great adhesive but it takes forever to fully bond whereas this thing bonds initially within about three or four minutes and then goes to the standard e6000 curing time of, of a few hours after that so that's how you can see that in a basically a 10 minute period i can put together the entire lightsaber and have it stay together i'm not having to worry about oh i have to stop and do this and stop and then wait 20 minutes for it to set and so on i can bond move to the next piece bond move to the next piece and so on you can see i'm just picking a some of the dried glue off already where it's stuck to it a little bit and again not a problem it comes straight off now what i really like about luke's return of the jedi lightsaber is that it's got a lot of throwbacks to Obi-Wan's saber in the sense that it has sections that look like Obi-Wan's design but just not quite. So for me it kind of sits in that iconic era design of lightsabers from the original trilogy between as I said in one of my previous videos the Alec Guinness Obi-Wan saber, Vader's saber, Anakin's saber Luke Saber. They all have that really authentic kind of 1970s design to them because obviously they were all designed using whatever they had to hand, like the Graflex camera flash for the uh, Darth Vader Saber, for example. And that's one of the things that I liked about the Unimatrix design that he'd done for this Saber because it kept a lot of the simple design of this saber without taking it into a needlessly complex build and i've come across a few of the luke sabers that are really really complex for seemingly no reason because at the end of the day this is a saber that was built in the early 80s i would have been god i think i was about five years old when return of the jedi came out 
so the final result of a Luke Saber when it was all said and done was something that felt solid, but at the same time wasn't ridiculously difficult to put together. And that in itself is going to become important because as we get to the Mara Jade Saber, you're gonna see that that whilst being an amazing saber, hands down, just is really, really, really fiddly to put together because that saber itself has so many parts that as I was initially setting it up to put it together, it was very, very daunting and I really didn't know what I was getting into. But we'll cover that more once we get to the Mara Saber assembly. So at this point, I was just about done with the assembly for Luke's Saber. I'd got all the finicky little bits in, like the red button, the green button, and the side panel. The actual activator switch was in. At this point, all I had to do was glue the emitter together and get it on top of the Saber. And then I was pretty much thinking, oh, I'm home and dry. I'm done. I'm set. But it wasn't quite that easy. And I get the top on and I'm thinking to myself, yeah, we're all set. Let's just make sure the seam lines up properly so that we can hide it on the wall. And then comes this little bit here, which I've cut out about five minutes of me fiddling around trying to get this D-ring piece in place. But it was a pain in my ass. Moving into Mara's Saber, I was pretty much already set with how I was going to go about this because it was a solid piece that just needed to have the main three sections glued together, which went relatively easy. I had to modify the pegs because Master Jedi's original design, the pegs were too long. They were too long and the holes were too shallow. So it led to some pretty horrendous gaps at times within the Sabre that I had to eliminate, which was relatively simple all in all. Now, as I've been doing these Sabres, I've been taking a bit of liberty, shall we say, at times with the colour choices. On some of the Sabres, I've been using a metallic black as opposed to a matte black because I felt that it looked better. Like Luke's Return of the Jedi Sabre, for example, the metallic black interspersed on the grip with the metallic silver just looked absolutely fantastic. It looked good as well on Obi-Wan's Episode 3 lightsaber. It didn't look so good on the Episode 4 lightsaber, which you'll see in an upcoming video. And it didn't look very good on Mara's. So I opted to utilize a matte black filament instead for the grip, which actually came out looking really, really nice. And in the end, I wound up using that same matte black filament for the bumpers that go around the upper part of the Sabre here as well. All in all, it's something that I'm starting to utilize in other sabers as well depending upon what i'm doing so like yoda's lightsaber that i've done it uses the matte black and so does obi-wan's episode 4 as i said vader's is going to use the matte black as well because i feel it's more in keeping with that design as we move into a post return of the jedi era into things like Ahsoka and into the sequel trilogy, for example, I've utilized the metallic black filament, such as on Balin Skull's lightsaber, on Shin Hati's lightsaber, on Sabine's lightsaber I used it. But then if we look at Kyle Katarn's lightsaber, that again, I have not yet featured in the video, but will in time, it's utilizing matte black because again, it fell in that era that I felt was going to be using the matte black design more. Now as we move beyond the bumpers into the buttons, again I stuck with the matte black in this case so you'll see that the insert to this button is also matte black, I didn't go with metallic in that case. I wanted to keep a fairly uniform palette for the 
blacks in the saber if that's what I was actually going for. So I I never swapped between metallic black, matte black in any saber because it would probably start to look a little strange after a while as well. Now, this control box was one of the first really tough parts of the Mara Jade Saber and that's because it really only mounts in a couple of places and it doesn't really adhere to great either because it's such a small surface area that it's gluing on and it's held in place really with the two buttons. Now again my glue container at this point is beginning to turn into a bloody nightmare and you can see it's got it had strands coming off of it and you can actually see me cursing it out at times here and once it's in I kind of have to keep jiggling it around and straightening it up a bit because the control box just does not want to line up properly and then I have a bunch of little glue tendrils that I have to take care of as well which is what I'm doing right now with a pair of scissors and yep, there's, there we go. You can't clean it with anything else. You can just lick your finger and try and get the glue off that way. And all in all, once that went on, I thought, okay, we're, we're, we're set here. We're home and dry. This is already going together quickly. I don't think I've got too much left to do. Let's get started on the screws. And I honestly could not have been more wrong. Mara's lightsaber has a grand total of 30 screws across the entire surface of the lightsaber and about 25 of those screws are in the grip alone and I started off using the Loctite glue and that didn't actually do a bloody thing. I screw I mounted about three screws and promptly they all fell out. They were just not gluing in properly at all. But not only that, I got Loctite on a piece of the hilt and literally discolored it, which is what I was talking about earlier when I was talking about why I prefer to use my E6000. So I actually edited all that out of the video because it was just painful to watch and I really didn't want to relive it. But you can understand that even when I've been doing this three years, some things still take me by surprise. And honestly, this part of the lightsaber, it was tough and there were times where I was like, oh God, I just, I can't do any more screws. But I'm glad that I stuck with it. Because once this was done, and I started to get into the final stages, I was starting to see something that I was just falling in love with more and more by the second as I was completing it. So as I reached the home stretch, I was like maybe three or four screws away from finishing everything and just had the emitter to glue in place and things like that. Everything else from this point went very, very easily, to be completely honest. There was no, there was no more surprises waiting for me. So on reflection, having now finished Mara's Saber, I would say that I'm glad that I stuck with it, even though it was an absolute pain at times and the 30 screws were very daunting, especially just over and over again with the same pieces, you know, just trying to keep it tidy, trying to keep it together. And in the end, as you'll see now, side by side, these pieces look absolutely amazing and I'm so glad that I have them. So there we have it, the other great love story in Star Wars, Luke Skywalker and Mara Jade. I think these two sabers make great additions to my collection and I absolutely love them. 
hope you guys like them too. Let me know down in the comments what you think to them. And I hope you've enjoyed the video today as well. And until next time, may the force be with you.